up you guys? It's Moe Soda here and welcome back to the weekly react video. If you are new here, I pick one series from each anime season to make a weekly video reacting to each episode. So make sure you subscribe down below and turn on the bell notification so you get notified as soon as I upload a video. Potentially. This season I'm reacting to The Promised Neverland, so let's just get right into episode three. If they made saxophone playing sound that good when I played the saxophone, I definitely would not have quit. That song is a banger. I love the OP. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I, I, I love this OP so, so, so much. So much. Episode 3 starts off with so much information. It's like all of the questions that I've been asking, we've been wondering, have been all answered within this first five minutes of this episode. It's explained in a way that doesn't make it hard to endure. Nope, that's not it. It's explained in a way that you're not bogged down by all the information. You're basically just like finding it out through the conversations and kind of like context clues. And I just want to point out before we move forward that I love, I love, I leave the filming of the library scene um there's a lot of information that they are throwing at you in the conversation but because of the way it is filmed it doesn't feel like you're watching a lot of dialogue and the visuals made up for all of the dialogue that was happening and it made this eerily creepy atmosphere because they're talking about crazy old stuff and sneaking around and trying to figure out what their little what their little tracking devices do you know so i loved it i was like "Ooh, this is nice to watch while i'm reading all of this stuff it's also kind of funny that the kids are talking about 2015 technology being outdated when their tracking devices in their ears don't even like emit notifications it's not like an actual gps tracking device it's just like if you're trying to look up someone you can see where they are but you don't get notifications when they walk somewhere or when they go somewhere i'm just saying I'm pretty sure that technology would have advanced farther than that in the year 2045. Just saying. However, if that's actually true, we don't know. We just think the kids just think that that is how it works because Isabella couldn't actually like find out where they were unless she was looking for them. So who knows? Maybe the technology is there. You would think that technology would have advanced 34 years in the future. But I guess it didn't. I don't understand why. If you are in the future, why are you wearing all these weird Middle Ages clothes? Like, I don't understand. This is not what I thought the future would look like. It's kind of like they're back in time instead of forward in time. But anyway, here are all the things that we found out in this episode. There is more than one farm or plant, whatever you want to call it. There is more than one orphanage where children are kept to be grown. It sounds so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> There are more grown-ups than just Isabella. Isabella definitely knows who was at the gate that night when the harvest was happening. And there have been other kids that have figured out the secret of the farm. And the protocol to deal with kids like that is to ship them off immediately to the demons. However, in this episode, it's revealed that Isabella doesn't want to ship them off. She wants to deal with them in her own way because they have been having trouble at all the other farms producing high quality meat. <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like talking about people like that. <laughs> the kids have been dumb at all these other farms. And Isabella is producing three really highly intelligent children. Um, and she wants to make sure that nobody finds out that they have found out 
that they know about the farm. She doesn't want the higher ups uh, that are actually running the whole operation to know that she kind of technically failed if they figured out what was happening at the farms and at the gate. Also, the position of caretaker or mom of the orphanages is pr is a pretty coveted position, it seems like, because Sister Crone was like really excited that she could maybe overthrow Isabella in the orphanage and take over. Uh. It's a pretty highly coveted position. And the demons have a boss or god or something like that that they offer all of the highest quality children to, and they're about to have a festival or uh, an offering situation called Tildad or something like that. I don't remember. They're about to have a really nice harvest and give the best children to the higher up boss person. And since there is a new baby, I'm wondering how they produce the tiny baby situation. How does that happen? Do they have people in a room just doing it 24-7 to make these babies? That's all they have to do. I don't know. Are they making them from scratch out of like, I don't know, cells and stuff like that? I don't know. I'm very curious because the baby already came kind of like fully grown-ish. Not a tiny, tiny baby, but it's kind of a little bit big of a baby. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? What happens to them before they get into the orphanage? How do they become orphanage ready? I, this whole situate, this whole conversation is very awkward. And how does one become a grown-up? Do they let the smartest children that escape grow up to figure out everything and then become the demon slaves that take care of all the children? How does that happen? Are the grown-ups grown grown up? I don't know. I want to know. Are they allowed to live past 12? What is the deal? We also know that Sister Crone is batshit crazy because she cannot control herself. She talks to a baby doll. She gives people crazy stares. If somebody gave me that stare, I would be like, Ex can I help you? I already said my thing. Get away from me. Get out of my face. And she's trying to overthrow Isabella within the first like 24 hours that she's even at the orphanage. Her and Emma's personalities are so fantastical that at some points in the show they lose their realism and it, if I have a hard time believing that. I have a hard time believing in the character. Do you know what I mean? They lose a little bit of the realistic parts of a character trait of a person or someone that is relatable uh, to me as a human. Um, I do understand that these are character traits and they are trying to make this world fantastical, obviously because they are demons, it's in a farm, like this entire world is fantastical. But for me to be able to relate to the characters, I need a little bit more of a grounded, realistic character trait. You know what I mean? character situation. They just make me cringe a little bit in like the bad way, do you know? And the biggest twist of the episode is that there could potentially be a mole. So you've got these crazy demons that are pushing around these caretakers to get them the best tasting children, I guess from their high IQ scores. You've got kids in an orphanage that think they are about to go get adopted to their forever home and that life is normal and it's not. And then you've got a kid that could to potentially be a mole and if that's the case then she's got to know all the other stuff that's happening and she's just letting it happen. Right? That's where my mind goes in that situation, right? She probably already knows everything. Unless Isabella really like gave her a, a different story, you know? to make her act in a way that is favorable to Isabella. Who knows? I don't know. Is there actually a mole? They insinuated that there is a mole, but is there? Is that 10 year old smarter than all of the other 11 year olds? I don't know. They seem to focus on the green haired girl a lot. I, let's, I don't know her name. Okay. Neither does the Wikipedia page, okay? And they've also introduced grandma. So they've got this hierarchy of family happening um, where Isabella is on the phone with grandma reporting about all of the situations that are happening. She says, everything's fine. It's not. Um, and then they hang up. So you can see this hierarchy of family through women figures, the mom, the sister, the grandma, the demons. I don't know. There's some... It's all connected. We'll find, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out soon, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. If there is a mole, Emma is doing a terrible job at it. Terrible job at keeping the secret. Can you just, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, please. Please, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck 
up, Emma. Emma. Hey, Emma, you, over there, stop. Stop doing that. Hello. Excuse, hi, 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 Emma. Hi. Stop. She might as well just scream it out at the dinner table. Hi, everyone. I saw Connie. Isabella killed her. We're all gonna die. Just, just come on out and say it. Get it all out on the table, get it off your chest, then you don't have to make all those crazy, weird, gross facial expressions that you keep making. Stop. Like, excuse me, have you ever heard of the term poker face, Emma? Have you? Have you heard of that? Maybe not, because you're only 11. But hey, you are one of the smartest children at the orphanage, so maybe you've read a, a book about poker. But... And that's how you do it. It's just that easy. You're freaking out. You stop freaking out. Just be mindful of what your face is doing. She needs to get it together. <laughs> If she actually wants to save all of these children, she's got to pull herself together, stop freaking out on her face, freak out internally, absolutely freak out internally. Go run to the bathroom, scream your head off. Go run to your bed, scream into your pillow. You know, do what you got to do. In your, in, 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 in your, in your alone time. Do that in your alone time. But when you're out in front of everybody, you gotta, sh you gotta shut up. You gotta shut, shut, just shut, shut, just shut, just shut, 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 shut. Especially if you are going to try to save all of these children. You keep giving it away. How everyone hasn't noticed yet that you're freaking out, I don't know. Isabella figured it out. She's got the, the brain, she's got the skill set to see that you are freaking out. You probably did something you shouldn't have. So you gotta keep it together, Emma. She is unable to read the situation, read the atmosphere, and figure out what's going on through context clues of everybody's interactions with each other. She can't problem solve. She doesn't ever really like think past the surface of what someone is telling her. She's just like, wow, I can't do that now. It's impossible. I have to do this thing, you know? And I get it because a lot of this stuff is kind of crazy, but you have to like reel it in and think logically about the situation and try to figure out a plan. So when I think of like a crazy situation, I'm like, okay, suck it up, suck it up. Do this, do this, do this, you're gonna be okay. Do this, do this, do this, get everybody out, you're gonna be okay. You know, that's where my brain goes, but apparently not for Emma. She's just like, Wah! That's not gonna help you in a crisis situation. You are in a crisis situation. Just calm down, calm down, girl. Listen to Norman, listen to Ray, you'll be good. They're gonna help you out. And you cannot control her facial expression, so everyone's gonna find out. You know, if you see somebody walking around like this, you're gonna be like, girl, what's up? Are you okay? Cause you do not look okay. You know, like, like, ugh. Her facial expressions are gonna get them all caught. Isabella's gonna find out, and you're not even gonna be able to save your entire family. You're probably only gonna be able to save yourself. E.B. That was it for this episode. In the next episode, I hope we get to find out how Isabella is going to deal with the children. What is she going to do? Is she going to tie them up? Is she going to lock them up? Is she going to shock them to death? I don't know. I hope we get to find out. I hope we see Sister Crone trying to take out Isabella and fail. Because to be honest, Sister Crone kind of gets on my nerves a little bit and I'd like to see her fail and go back to the plant, other, another plant, go back to the hot, to the heavens and deal with grandma and somehow. I don't know. I hope she fails. <laughs> also, would love to see them try and escape. They've been talking about escaping for the past two episodes. Can we escape already? Can we escape? Can we try it? Or can we, can we get a plan? Can we get a plan together? Let's get a blueprint first. Maybe maybe next episode we'll get a blueprint or something because Isabella's about to pull a trigger, Sister Crony's about to pull the trigger, and y'all need to figure out your situation so you can get out of there. Is the green-haired girl actually a mole? Hope we find out that. Let me know what you think of this episode in the comments down below and hit that subscribe button. Join the Moe Squad. We would love to have you. And I'll see you all next week for another episode. Bye!